state parks. Even though those crazy conditions out there happening right now in Florida, search teams were able to recover four more victims overnight, bringing the death toll to 32. Here at home, changes could be coming soon to 13th Street Bridge. The bridge connects North Augusta and Augusta, but now GDOT wants to make it better, not just for cars, but for people who bike and walk these trails. Our Celeste Springer is live there now. Celeste, break down what we're looking at. Well, GDOT is looking for your input on the new uh, bridge plans that they have. Let me show you one component component that they have in mind. This is Bartram Trail, and if you want to head over to North Augusta, well, too bad. There is no sidewalk over here, so you got to turn around, go all the way down that way, cross over at Reynolds Street, then cross over and head down the bridge. The new plans will add a new sidewalk to the east side here, creating an access from Bartram Trail to North Augusta. More importantly, however, they're adding an underpass below the bridge connecting the trail to the Augusta Canal. People will be able to walk and ride without having to leave the trails like they do now. They're also widening the sidewalk that's currently on the west side of the bridge to 10 feet. Right now, it is a pretty tight squeeze. And if you have any questions or thoughts, well, GDOT is looking to hear from you. All those comments will be received. They'll be analyzed by our environmentalists, our historians, our project engineers, and responses will actually come back. That whole response uh, recap will be posted on the website as well. Folks are curious on what others may have asked about, and generally all the questions are going to be answered. And coming up at 6 o'clock, I'm working on a full story about this, taking a closer look at all the plans, as well as we'll be telling you how you can give them your feedback on the plans for the new bridge. Thanks so much, Celeste. Looking at those plans, it looks phenomenal. It's going to be amazing when they actually do this and certainly safer for everyone. Thanks, Celeste. Two people forecast coming up in just about 10 minutes. Well, this is what your view could be if you look at the 13th Street Bridge in the future, that span connecting North Augusta and the city of Augusta. It's been around since 1939, but GDOT says it is out with the old and in with the new. And the new is shiny. Their plans are in the early stages, and they do want to hear your feedback about all of this. Our Celeste Springer is on the 13th Street Bridge to show us what could be in store. Celeste. Well, if you've ever walked or biked on this sidewalk on the bridge, you're probably braver than a lot of people, including myself. I'm kind of trying to stick to the side here. I got four lanes of cars zooming past me. GDOT believes 20,000 cars come through here a day. There's no barrier here, and the sidewalk is only about this big. But there are plans in the works to change all of this, and some of those plans include connections to our local trails, too. We look at it, and we think, no, we don't want to go that way. Jim and Charlene Heidley bike the trails in Augusta and North Augusta all the time, but have never braved the 13th Street Bridge while enjoying the outdoors. It's very narrow, and there's an awful lot of traffic. I mean, an awful lot of traffic that moves very fast. But GDOT is making plans to replace the 80-some-year-old bridge. It's out with the old and in with the new, and they say there's some new perks. It's helping the cars, too, but... Um, importantly, it's helping folks on foot, folks on bike. They plan to widen the current sidewalk to 10 feet and add a new one on the east side. But with that, this proposal has a lot of unique elements. Things like a connection between Bartram Trail and the Augusta Canal Trail underneath, staircases on each side over in North Augusta, and a connection to the Greenway. And they made that a priority for us. So they wanted a hopefully an aesthetically pleasing bridge, but for sure, to include um, navigation elements. And GDOT needs your help. They want your input on all of this. This virtual open house is the time for folks to let us know what they think. And this is something you can have a real impact. Your voice will be noted. And as of right now, your input to GDOT is due August 13th. We'll have the link with all the details on the plans for the project, as well as where to send that input on our website, WRDW.com. It all looks really good, and remember, that's just the starting point, so uh, no telling where we'll end up after people uh, put their ideas into it. But interesting update there, Celeste, from a very busy 13th Street Bridge. Thank you. 
Well, a violent holiday weekend all across the country and right here at home. At least 150 people killed in 400 shootings nationwide. One person died in Swainsboro on Saturday. The violence continued into Monday when a woman in Denmark, South Carolina, was shot and killed as well. Investigators say this man, Kelsey Gilbert, drove up next to a car and shot into it three times early yesterday morning. The victim, Shakira Weimers, was hit. She then drove into a utility pole. The pole and a transformer fell onto the car. Gilbert is charged with murder and attempted murder. We now have the mugshot for the man accused of killing one person and hurting three more in that Swainsboro shooting. Dallas Clark facing multiple charges, including murder and aggravated assault. GBI investigators say Clark shot and killed Jermichael Kirkland Saturday after a fight at the Bird Sports Bar and Lounge on South Main Street there. Police say the three other people who were shot were taken to a hospital. Two have since been released. The other is still there. They say that person is stable. In Grovetown, a straight bullet actually went through someone's roof. Luckily, no one was hurt, but as Sloan O'Cone tells us, they had no idea it happened until their neighbor posted about it. I'm here in good old landing where over the weekend, a family was shocked to come home to a bullet in their son's bed. I talked to some of their neighbors and they were just as surprised to find out. I'm kind of surprised, you know, that that would happen, you know, in the city. You don't, you don't just hear gunshots in the middle of Grove Town. That's scary just because of the number of children that live in this neighborhood. On Saturday the 3rd, someone was celebrating the holiday the wrong way. Police believe someone was shooting their gun in the air between 5.30 and 10.30 p.m., leaving a bullet in a child's bed. Luckily, no one was hurt, but one local gun expert says the situation could have been much worse. Incredibly unsafe. Because if that bullet goes up in the air, it's got to come down somewhere. If it came through the roof with enough force to go through that material, it could have penetrated that individual's skin. If you shoot in the air, you do not know where, who, or what you could hit. I'd be extremely angry, you know, not just because of my wife and myself, but I mean, we have cats. You know, those are our kids. There's a bullet coming through my roof. It's infuriating. This doesn't happen often, but to protect yourself and family. We think that you could put a time between you and the gunshot, distance and shielding. Those would be ways that you could plus up your safety. Depending on the angle of the shot and how much material the bullet passes through can be the difference between life and death. Slater says no matter what, it's just not worth it. The cost of bullets, by the way, is crazy expensive. You're better off buying fireworks and celebrating that way. Local authorities say they're looking into where the bullet came from. A rare occurrence, but it's better to be safe. So remember, what goes up must come down. In Grovetown, Sloan O'Cone, on your side. Certainly scary for that family. Yeah. Also this evening, a big step today in the plans for a brand new James Brown.